Good morning, everybody. I am uh, Paola Mercogliano. I lead the, the regional model and geological impact at the CMCC Foundation. Uh, today, I will uh, briefly introduce uh, the webinar. This webinar uh, is included in the CMCC webinar series on urban adaptation, and it will concern urban climate and its islands. Today, we will have two speakers, uh, Philippe Lefebvre, from Vito Urban Climate Service Center. Uh, specifically, Philippe uh, belongs to the climate service team of the Environmental Modeling Business Unit, and Carmela Preda. She's a researcher at the Regional Model and Geological Impact of the CMCC Foundation. She's an architect working on the impact of climate change in urban areas. The webinar of today is the third of the series on urban adaptation. CMCC decided to create a series of virtual encounters in which outstanding experts from various professional fields providing a different expertise and perspective on urban adaptation to climate change to a broad audience. The next webinar in this series will be held in Italian and will show the activities performed in the framework of the ADAPT project, involving also different Italian cities managing the urban flood risk. More information on this event will follow soon. I want also mention that the seminar of the webinar of today is also the first of the series Climate Tuesday, a webinar series on climate service and climate related innovation, speaking uh, um, speaking uh, to um, in, this, in the so, sorry, in, um, this is a side event to Climate Europe Web Festival over the summer 2020. Few words on CMCC Foundation organizing this webinar. In this slide is reported our mission, but I, will, I want to mention our one of the values of CMCC. There is a, that is a, to inform and to facilitate the dialogue between the scientists, decision makers, and the general public to support decisions and action for the benefit of society and environment. These in this slide are reported the nine division of CMCC. Among these, there is the unit working on regional model and geological impact, in which we try to develop tools and models evaluating the climate change signal at the urban scale. Also, developing a specific regional climate model and tool. And also, we have a strategic project working on the quantitative evaluation of the impact of climate change on urban area, supporting local adaptation strategies. Moreover, uh, city and cost is a one of the nine topics of CMCC research activity. I want to also mention our um, outreach program, including scientific articles for international journals, educational program, events and communication activities for the public. Uh, for the public. About the webinar today, we will have two speeches. Each one will be of 20 minutes. And at the end, we will have a question and answer session. Um, please use the question tab on the GoToWebinar control panel on your right to write your question. The webinar will be recorded and uploaded on the CMCC YouTube channel and on CMCC website. Finally, I also take the opportunity to invite all of you to the next CMCC webinar in Italian language concerning soil erosion and climate change. It will be held on the 28th of July. Now, I kindly ask to Philip to take the floor and to start with his talk. Thank you. Hello, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Paola, for the uh, kind introduction. So I hope everybody can see my screen. So uh, without further notice, I'll start my presentation. So my name is Philippe Lefebvre, and I'm working at VITO in the uh, Climate Impacts team, which is specialized in urban climate services. So in my presentation, I will present you an overview of our urban climate research activities, 
and the um, contract work we're doing for local, regional and, and international uh, clients. So the use of urban climate services is uh, situated within the uh, desire of cities to become more um, resilient against the negative impact of climate change. And in this presentation, we will focus on the impacts related to uh, heat and excessive heat in cities. Um, I will start by a brief introduction or description of our urban climate model Urplin that we have developed at Vito and finalize with uh, a list of uh, applications, examples in which we have used the model for uh, specific uh, applications. So uh, before going to the model, I just want to highlight um, or, or to pinpoint out a few effects uh, due to the urban heat island in cities. So on the one hand, we all know that it has uh, negative effects on the health, on the health of people. Uh, it creates uh, increased mortality and morbidity. It's, uh, it impacts uh, the sleep of people and uh, maybe not so known, but it also has an impact on the uh, labor productivity of outdoor and indoor activities. It also leads to larger cooling costs for, um, for houses, offices, but uh, maybe uh, also the, the IT equipment is, is, uh, needs extra cooling to survive, uh, for example, during heat waves. It also impacts uh, infrastructure. On, on the positive side, we, there are a few, uh, few things such as, for example, smaller heating costs during winter. Uh, there is an extension of the growth season for uh, vegetation. And maybe a more pleasant side effect is that uh, during summer, the, the, the weather is more pleasant to have a beer on the terrace of a bar outside. So now I'm come to, coming to the, to the Urplin model. So the Urplin model developed at Vito is an uh, atmospheric urban boundary, lima, boundary layer model with a urbanized uh, surface module. So the model downscales a large scale uh, climatological meteorological fields using high resolution terrain information uh, and delivers uh, 100 meter spatial resolution hourly uh, fields of uh, air temperature, humidity and wind speeds. So you see at the bottom of the slide a rabbit and uh, the model has been designed uh, specifically to be fast. So compared to the traditional regional climate models, uh, the model is an order of magnitude faster than the, than the traditional models. The setup of the model is quite universal. So and by using Copernicus land data and Copernicus climate change uh, data, uh, we can set up the model quite easily for any city in the world. This is a, a typical example or, or showing you for the city of Antwerp, the uh, summer averaged uh, hourly air temperature, uh, which clearly shows you that uh, during the day, the air temperature differences between the city center and the outsides of outskirts of the city are not that large. But if you uh, look at, for example, from 8, 9, 10 o'clock in the evening until 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, the urban heat island effect builds up and has its highest uh, intensity around midnight. We, uh, we spend a lot of attention at Vito validating the Urplin model. So we have, uh, for example, in the city of Antwerp, we have set up our own measurement stations because um, urban climate data um, from measurements from, from in situ sites is not that readily available. So uh, for to validate the model, we sometimes need to set up our own measurement stations. And you can see here also that the model has been validated for a lot of cities uh, and documented in the scientific literature. At the bottom of the, of the slide, you see a time series for the summer of uh, 2013 showing the um, daily maximum urban heat island density, which you can see uh, goes up to six, six, eight degrees Celsius during specific moments. Another uh, validation exercise that I want to show you is the one done by ES Global for the city of Barcelona. So you see that for the city of Barcelona, which has uh, some significant topography, the model is able to reproduce the uh, mean daily cycle temperature difference between the urban and, and rural locations. Uh, the model, um, as I told you, has the capability of 
simulating quite fast um, urban climate data for a lot a lot of cities. So uh, within the Copernicus Climate Change uh, Sector Information System project called European Health, in which we, we work together with health partners from uh, Italy, Belgium, Hungary, and uh, Lithuania. We have applied a model for 100 European cities and uh, developed applications on the Climate Data Store specifically designed for the health community, allowing them to uh, rapidly, uh, easily um, um, extract from the uh, database uh, urban indicators. The data is available and can be downloaded. So you see here a screenshot of the Climate Data Store data set um, uh, website. So you can select easily the city in which you're interested uh, and, and the timing for which you want output. As an example, I'm showing here uh, an application that we developed showing the climatic suitability um, of the uh, tiger mosquito for, uh, for the city of Antwerp. So, uh, based on scientific literature, it's possible to derive an indicator which is called climatic suitability. Um, and applying the urban climate data, you can see that there are some gradients uh, and that the city center, due to the uh, higher nighttime temperatures, uh, which allows the mosquito to survive, has a much higher climatic suitability than the outskirts of the city. This is just uh, one example. Uh, another application of the European model was done in the framework of a uh, contract for the Flemish Environmental Agency, in which we have uh, um, divided the Flemish territory, which is about 200 kilometers from, uh, from west to east and 100 kilometers from north to south, a small region. So, but we divided the whole territory in uh, um, areas that can be dealt with by the European model, and we have calculated a high resolution 100, 100 meter um, high resolution 100 meter um, database of um, air temperatures for the whole Flemish uh, region for the period 2000 2016 and you can see that uh, even for a small area such as Flanders uh, the regional difference differences are quite large uh, with lower lower temperatures near the seaside and higher temperatures uh, towards the east due to the sandy soils and uh, of course the cities pop out as uh, the most warm spots in Flanders. So this data is, is integrated in the uh, Flemish uh, climate portal and is also documented in the state of the climate report of the agency. Uh, so until now, I've only uh, mentioned the uh, production of uh, urban climate data at a spatial resolution of 100 meter, but uh, and focusing on air temperature. But if you talk about thermal comfort, uh, the air temperatures are not the only parameter uh, um, impacting the, the thermal comfort. One should also look at the impact of radiation load, humidity, and wind speeds. And uh, in the literature, there are many indicators available, such as the UTCI or the PET. Uh, at Vito, we are familiar with uh, the wet bulb globe temperature, which is also an ISO standard, uh, was introduced by the US Army for outdoor activities and allows to define specific categories of uh, different levels of heat stress. So uh, to, um, to calculate wet bulb globe temperatures, uh, we need Spatial, uh, spatial data, spatial building data, and also data about the uh, location of vegetation and trees in particular. But um, I show you here an example for the city of Brussels. So on the left hand side, you see uh, a map showing the urban heat island intensity at midnight for uh, an average, average urban heat island intensity at midnight at the 100 meters uh, spatial resolution. And then this output is then further processed, integrating building effects and vegetation effects to come up with a one meter spatial resolution wet bulb globe temperature for a specific time of the day, a warm day in the summer of 2016. So you might have noticed that this is the, the city center of Brussels with the very uh, specific form of the city center. And you see that there is a very large variability, micro scale variability between uh, between streets and and urban 
urban areas that are more green. So this, um, this information is used by the city of Brussels to uh, steer the development of new cool spots um, and to uh, also further develop adaptation strategies to make, uh, to make the heat stress less, less uh, intense uh, in the city center. Another application is, is looking into the future. So uh, we have developed a, a statistical method to, uh, to uh, translate current climate uh, um, heat island effects towards the future. And as you can see here, this is an example for the city of Delhi in India, in which uh, we looked at the impact of climate change, but also integrating the, the expansion of the city. So uh, especially in, in, in Asia, one cannot uh, assume that the size of the city stays the same looking into the future. So and as you can see here, the colors look the same for the different graphs, but if you look at the legend, one can see that the uh, number of heat wave days per year drastically in increases and that towards the end of the century, uh, we are expecting, we, we, we're forecasting or projection, we're projecting a tenfold increase in the number of heat wave days. Uh, another example that was done for the city of Liège in Belgium, in which we have also looked at uh, the in an integrated analysis of urban expansion, population growth, and climate change. Um, and on the, uh, on the, on the left-hand side, you can see the uh, exposure analysis of the inhabitants of the city of Liège to the number of heat wave days per summer. And this is done in blue for the current climate and in red or orange for uh, the a period centered around the year 2030. And one can see that uh, on, on average nowadays, people are exposed to uh, one to two heat wave days per summer, but this will uh, increase towards uh, to, to six to eight for the majority of the people uh, living in the city. Finally, or not finally, but uh, I also want to uh, highlight the, the Climate Fit City project, it's a 2020 project uh, that PITO has been coordinating in which we have worked together with a number of sectorial experts, and you can see the list of sectors uh, on, on the map, uh, in which we have worked out the demonstrators in which the sectoral experts have used the urban, uh, urban climate data to develop uh, applications um, looking at uh, the impact of the urban heat island effect on the specific activity and also uh, looking at how the um, impacts change and evolve uh, in the future due to climate change. So timing is too short to, to go through all the applications, but I just want to highlight a few of them to give you a flavor of what can be done with the urban climate data. So uh, first, I want to say that all data produced, urban climate data produced within Climate Fit City is available from a data platform that is up and running where you can visualize the data, but also through FTP, uh, download the data you're interested in. The first application was uh, a heat health mortality analysis. So um, the scientists from ES Global in Barcelona have worked on the city of Barcelona, but also on the city of London. And they have um, analyzed in detail the relationship between heat and, and health at a very localized scale. So they have, um, they have, and finally they have integrated the, the results in, in web applications for the end users to, uh, to, to easily access the results. So what you see on the screen are spatially distributed heat mortality data showing the increased risk of mortality for warm summer days in comparison with temperate summer days. And also taking into account uh, the influence of gender, age and education. And you can see that uh, across the city of Barcelona and also the city of London, there are uh, differences in this uh, heat mortality uh, association, which can then be used by the urban authorities to focus on uh, in their adaptation strategies and action plans. Another example is a very evident one. Uh, we all know that uh, greening uh, the city um, has uh, a lot of benefits and also in terms of uh, thermal comfort. 
So we worked out together with the Czech partners, GSAT and the ERS, a case for the city of Hodena, uh, where there is uh, where there are plans to redevelop a, a square. So we have analyzed at high resolution the different planning scenarios of the square. Uh, which differ in terms of greening scenarios. So this information is then again used in stakeholder processes uh, to discuss the different um, possibilities. And finally, I have an example on the uh, link between urban climate and building energy. Um, so we have analyzed uh, the situation um, in which um, yeah, building energy models are are used using uh, rural climate data compared to the situation in which urban climate data is used. This is something that has not been done so often yet. So uh, Prono, which is a building energy uh, specialist, private company, together with Meteotest, which is uh, a private company in Switzerland, delivering or delivering uh, services to uh, provide uh, input data for the uh, building energy models. So what can we see here? So on the left, you can see that for the city of Prague and Bern, which are uh, two cities north of the Alps, that the impact of using rural uh, urban climate data compared to rural climate data uh, does not has a big influence on the cooling energy demand, but has, uh, has an impact on the heating energy demand and that Differences up to 20% can be noticed uh, due, to the, due to the use of urban climate data compared to rural climate data. On the right hand side, you can see a graph showing the um, results for two cities south of the Alps, Rome and Barcelona. And one can see that um, the, uh, the cooling energy demand for the, in, for the case in the city of Barcelona doubles if the urban climate data is used compared to the rural climate data. So there we have a big impact on the, on the, uh, on the use of different types of data. So I think this is something that needs to be taken into account when also uh, developing um, urban mitigation strategies. So this is the last example I wanted to give you. So um, I just want to, to thank you for your attention. And uh, I can also indicate you a few websites where you can find more information on our activities. And if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Can you see the slide? Okay. Okay. Uh, perfect. Uh, thank you, uh, Paula, for the introduction. Thank you, Philip, for your very interesting presentation. And uh, uh, thank you all for attending the webinar. Uh, my name is Carmela Preda. I'm an architect and I work for the CMCC Foundation and in particular for the Regional Models and Geohydrological Impact Division. In this presentation, I will show uh, the main findings of uh, a study concerning the uh, assessment of um, uh, the effects of urban morphology on air temperature through the parameterization of housing blocks in the Euro-Mediterranean context. Okay. Urban environments are experiencing significant variation in climate pattern compared to their surroundings, posing uh, a very serious challenges to the population as uh, uh, cities warming, poor uh, air quality, and increased impacts of extreme weather and climate related events, such as uh, uh, heat waves uh, and floods. Uh, such an alteration is related to uh, the intrinsic characteristic of built environment. Uh, urban features such as uh, uh, land use change, high build density and high concentration of people and activities in urban environment can affect the uh, outdoor microclimate 
by modifying thermal and radiative properties of urban surface and local airflow, uh, resulting uh, in a worsening of thermal comfort condition and building environmental performance. So uh, it is essential to uh, assess the contribution of urban feature in modifying local microclimate by adopting a quantitative approach to correlate variation in urban morphology to variation in microclimate condition, providing an effective tool to support adaptation policies and design processes. In this context, the REMI division is implementing a strategic project named Urban Pro concerning the uh, integrated assessment for urban protection. One of the main goals is related to uh, the advancement of knowledge concerning uh, planning, design and management of adaptation measures with special regard towards the most significant impact potentially increased by climate change in urban areas, such as uh, uh, urban in Thailand and uh, urban flooding. Of course, uh, the implementation of this goal imply uh, dealing with some uh, complexities and some challenges related to two main issues. Uh, first, uh, the use of information obtained by uh, regional climate downscaling to represent with a great uh, detail and accuracy uh, the local climate condition. And second, the uh, development of a detailed and representative 3D uh, CT model, including uh, all relevant urban feature, which is also spatially and computationally uh, efficient. Uh, in this context, uh, this research uh, activity conducted within the framework of the Urban Pro is aimed at uh, investigating the effect of urban morphology on urban microclimate by analyzing the characteristics and performance of typical Euro-Mediterranean housing blocks. The presentation includes uh, the main findings of a parametric investigation, highlighting a close relationship between density, geometry and air temperature distribution. Uh, the analysis of this key uh, factor represent uh, a theoretical basis for the improvement of design uh, measure by integrating, uh, integrating quantitative climate data in urban planning, architecture and uh, environmental design, uh, supporting local authorities and practitioners uh, to build uh, resilient cities in a changing climate context. The methodology uh, developed uh, in this study consists uh, of three uh, steps. The first, uh, the selection uh, of seven housing blocks, including uh, single family and multifamily housing types. In the second, uh, the blocks are modeled by adopting a parametric approach based on some um, urban design descriptors related to uh, surface coverage, density and canyon geometry. In particular, uh, the blocks are modeled considering uh, different percentage of building impervious and impervious coverage, different building density, and finally also uh, the canyon ratio, uh, canyon ratio is taken into account. Uh, the modeling and the microclimate simulation are performed with the computational fluid dynamic uh, uh, MVMET model, uh, considering three configuration of surface cover and three uh, different wind uh, direction. Finally, in the third steps, uh, in the third step, a microclimate analysis is carried out by uh, comparing the output air temperature and the urban design descriptor. Uh, to highlight two uh, thermal effects, uh, the built form effect resulting from the comparison between impervious housing blocks neglecting the effect of green areas and the green cooling effect resulting from the comparison between impervious and impervious housing blocks. In the first step, uh, seven housing blocks are selected uh, considering the most representative types of Euro-Mediterranean cities uh, these uh, uh, typical blocks uh, have to be uh, regarded as a hypothetical district or simplified uh, urban forms, uh, including uh, periurban and urban typologies. Among the single family housing types, uh, um, detached and attached houses are considered, while the multifamily uh, housing uh, include open, semi-open and closed types. In particular, uh, the perimeter type include shaped block with one courtyard and block with multiple courtyard. 
uh, these blocks are modeled with different values of surface uh, cover uh, with different density uh, value and uh, different building uh, uh, arrangement. Uh, the surface coverage is considered to uh, investigate the role of ground vegetation uh, in lowering temperature, neglecting the contribution of uh, uh, direct shading provided by uh, trees. Uh, this is because the aim of uh, uh, the study is to evaluate the contribution of grassed surface, which is uh, uh, a more cost-effective uh, solution than uh, planting uh, trees. The surface coverage descriptor uh, adopted uh, are uh, the building uh, impervious and green coverage uh, ratio, uh, which are calculated as the ratio between uh, building impervious and pervious area and plot area respectively. From the uh, combination of these characteristics, uh, 21 configuration are uh, obtained based on a same plot area of one hectare. Build density uh, is measured in terms of floor area ratio, as the ratio between uh, the building's total floor area and the plot area. Based on FAR, uh, the building density uh, is generally classified in low, medium, high and very high density. Uh, in this study, uh, the multifamily housing types are characterized by high density value. The geometrical characteristics of the urban canyon are also uh, investigated and defined by um, the calculation of, of canyon aspect uh, ratio, uh, measured as the ratio between the mean height of the buildings and the width of the street or the width of uh, other open spaces such as uh, courtyards and uh, square. Uh, based on uh, aspect ratio, uh, the urban canyon are generally classified in avenue, regular and deep canyon, and in this study, uh, avenue and regular canyon are uh, considered. The second step um, also concerns the uh, numerical simulation of uh, microclimate condition through the ambient model, and uh, three main activities are carried out. Firstly, uh, the built environment are modeled and all buildings, road and green areas are modeled uh, considering um, a domain with a spatial resolution of two meters. Then uh, the uh, simulation uh, parameters are configured uh, considering the typical climate condition of Euro Mediterranean cities. In particular, uh, the air temperature derived from uh, a rough estimation uh, obtained by averaging over 30 years uh, the hourly temperature data at 2 meters provided by the HERAFI climate reanalysis dataset. Um, this dataset is provided at a resolution of uh, about 30 uh, kilometers and the data uh, considered uh, and we consider the data uh, during the summer season. Uh, furthermore, uh, a wind speed of uh, 3 meters per second at the height of 10 meters is considered with three different wind uh, directions uh, from west, southwest and south. Uh, a total of 63 uh, simulations are carried out. The third step of the uh, analysis concerns uh, the, uh, um, the microclimate analysis. And in this case, uh, the built form effect is uh, shown. Uh, the figure uh, shows the results of a numerical experiment carried out for impervious configuration, forced considering uh, the minimum input air temperature on the left and the maximum air temperature on the right with the three uh, wind uh, direction. Uh, the median value of air temperature at the height of 1.6 uh, meters of impervious housing blocks are compared and the effects of green areas in this case are uh, neglected. As regards the single family housing types, uh, it emerged that B1, the uh, detached houses, is not influenced by wind direction, in contrast to B2. And uh, later I show uh, some map 
uh, that highlight uh, more clearly uh, the different behavior of B1 and B2. As regards the multifamily housing types, uh, uh, B3, B41 and B42 uh, return uh, the most significant variation. Uh, the wind from south uh, determines the highest value uh, at night time and the lowest one during the daytime. And this behavior is um, highlighted with red and blue arrows uh, respectively. Between all the seven housing types, uh, the block with multiple courtyards, B43, uh, is the warmest configuration during the night time, considering all wind direction. Furthermore, between the three perimeter type, B41, B42 and B43, uh, during the daytime, uh, the closed type B43, uh, um, without lateral opening, um, is, the, um, is the case with the lowest uh, air uh, temperature. And uh, these results uh, emphasize the important role of uh, uh, courtyards in mitigating air temperature during the daytime. The green cooling effect um, is analyzed by comparing impervious housing configuration with the green ones, considering the wind coming from west and the wind coming from south. Uh, such a comparison um, allows identifying the contribution of green coverage in reducing or uh, exacerbating heat-related stresses and the effective percentage of green cover required by each urban layout to reduce air temperature. Uh, the results are shown uh, as thermal difference between the median output air temperature of pervious and impervious configuration during the night time on the left and the daytime on the right. Uh, the results through all uh, the cases uh, reveal that the uh, contribution of vegetation is more effective for multifamily housing blocks B43 and B5 um, for the block with multiple courtyards and tower, both in nighttime and uh, also in the daytime. Among all cases, B1 and B2 reveal the most particular uh, behavior. Uh, the results of high density blocks uh, are in line with expected behavior with the temperature decreases with vegetation during day and night. On the contrary, B1 experiences an increase with the minimum input air temperature and the highest uh, decrease with the maximum input uh, air temperature for both wind uh, direction. Uh, while B2, the attached houses, uh, reveal an increase uh, in the nighttime uh, with the wind coming uh, from west. And these behavior are strictly uh, related to uh, their configuration. B1 and B2 are characterized by a lower density with small uh, buildings and the vegetation uh, shields the uh, underlying surface from incident solar uh, radiation during the uh, daytime, reducing uh, the heating and air temperature. Uh, however, in the night hours, um, vegetation could prevent the radiative cooling of surface, returning uh, an increase uh, in the air temperature. Uh, furthermore, it emerged that uh, not all housing blocks require a large amount of green coverage to achieve uh, a significant reduction in the air temperature, specifically B1 during uh, daytime, return the greatest reduction with 20% of green coverage. Uh, while in, in the night time it required more vegetation. Um, in comparison, the multifamily housing blocks uh, require more vegetation both in night time and daytime to achieve the same reduction of uh, uh, B1. Carmela, sorry, may I ask you to go to the conclusion because we have a lot of questions and then uh, in this way yes, we have yes, time yes, to yes, discuss. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, in order to uh, analyze more deeply uh, the case B1, in this figure I show the, um, the effect of wind on this uh, uh, configuration. In this case, the wind direction has not a great influence on um, B1 uh, because B1 is characterized by cubic, isolated, small building and the wind um, is free to flow around the uh, building. 
Uh, on the contrary, in the case B, B2, uh, the wind um, have a clear effect in uh, temperature reduction. Uh, in, in particular, in the case uh, uh, with wind coming from west, uh, we see um, that the uh, building uh, represents a barrier to, uh, to the wind coming from west and the, effect, and the positive effect of wind is reduced, moving gradually from west to the east. Uh, in the case of wind coming from south, uh, the flow is channeled along the canyon um, and uh, um, adding more vegetation, um, the temperature um, is uh, gradually uh, reduced. The results of uh, this is my last uh, slide. Uh, the results of microclimate analysis are also uh, interpreted in terms of uh, floor area ratio uh, to reveal the optimal configuration with the best uh, microclimate condition during nighttime and daytime. Uh, without green uh, areas, uh, the output temperature increases with the far during the nighttime and decreases in the daytime. Uh, among the multifamily housing blocks, uh, B43, the block with multiple courtyards, represented the best uh, configuration for daytime condition. Uh, it has the lowest output temperature in the uh, impervious configuration, and with 60% uh, of green coverage, it reaches the, uh, the highest uh, decrease. However, during the uh, nighttime, uh, B41 uh, represented the best solution. Uh, and this finding uh, revealed that, uh, despite its uh, several uh, potential variation, uh, the, perimeter, uh, the perimeter type uh, represents the best solution uh, in the Euro-Mediterranean context, require uh, a careful design of geometry, openings, and uh, um, design of courtyards, uh, according to local environmental features, such as orientation and prevailing winds. So uh, now I would like to summarize briefly some findings. Um, the main findings of uh, such a parametric investigation um, highlight a close relationship between density, geometry, and air temperature distribution, uh, recognizing the perimeter type uh, um, as the optimal configuration. Uh, the methodology proposed uh, in the study uh, could be integrated with further block typologies according to uh, site condition also outside the Euro-Mediterranean zone. Uh, other parameters could be introduced to uh, investigate, for example, the influence of wind uh, direction um, on thermal behavior of uh, housing blocks, such as frontal aspect ratio or envelope ratio. And it is essential to analyze, uh, to quantitatively um, measure this uh, key factor uh, affecting urban thermal en environment uh, in order to improve design measure uh, and integrate uh, quantitative climate data in urban planning, architecture and design. So um, this was my last slide with some reference and the link uh, to download the Howard List uh, paper. Is, uh, it's free. Uh, before August uh, 9, and uh, I would like to thank you all for attending uh, the webinar, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing your question. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Carmela. Uh, we, we can now start the, the question and answer session. I want to thank all the participants because there are uh, uh, different uh, uh, question and remark. Uh, I will try to, to, to ask the more interesting or the more, uh, I mean, uh, also because we have uh, only 15 minutes. Okay, the first question is uh, for, um, for Philip. Uh, Marius Zumwald asked if uh, the, is the urban climate model uh, open source or, or not? Hello, Paolo. Thank you for the question. The um, Urclean model is uh, it's not open source, so we are um, uh, it can be uh, acquired. We have a, a license uh, model for the model, so uh, if uh, somebody is interested, he can he or she can contact me. Okay, thank, thank you. And uh, also about this uh, this question. Um, okay, okay. Um, there is a second one uh, with uh, many congratulations and compliments on, uh, on your work, uh, and uh, especially from, um, from Kerina Singh uh, from South Africa. And uh, she said that they will be very interested in investigating the opportunity 
uh, to develop uh, um, your application uh, in the air uh, country. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, okay, another question asking which kind of morphological information you use for the calculation of the heat map for the European cities that you have presented. Okay, so yes, in the presentation, I uh, was very brief on the uh, required local data for uh, to, uh, to set up to configure the Urklin model. So uh, we need a number of uh, uh, layers or information. So we need, uh, first of all, the, the land cover uh, at high resolution. Uh, we need uh, information about the soil ceiling, about the permeability of the soil. Uh, we also need, of course, the, the topography. And we also need uh, information about the the, uh, the presence and the abundance of uh, vegetation. So, uh, and um, we, we we always have two options. So we can we can set up the model using uh, satellite based uh, information for these parameters. So there's a number of uh, uh, data sources available, and more and more are becoming available now because of the. Uh, the increases in resolution of the remote sensing uh, capabilities. Uh, in particular, I want to maybe highlight this now very shortly, there will be 10 meter resolution global map, uh, vegetation map, land cover map, um, which will be very interesting to use and, and will allow us to maybe uh, apply them all the more easily outside of Europe because uh, Europe is a data intensive area. So the, the, the the Corinne land cover data set, for example, allows uh, already to, to set up the model uh, very easily. So, so that's in a nutshell what we need uh, as information. So we have um, databases available, uh, but of course, if uh, a city has local information that is more accurate, uh, it's, it's preferable to use that information, but that um, demands some manual work and it's a little bit more, uh, let's say, a uh, bit more work to set up the model. Uh, there is also another question about the, the same uh, topic, uh, asking if it's possible to download uh, this uh, that metadata uh, when you download uh, the, the, the urban, urban clean data, if it's possible uh, to make the download of the metadata, yes. Okay, the input data that is used to set up the model. Um, I have to check. Uh, honestly, I am not sure if the input data is also available uh, on the urban climate data platform of the Climate Fit City project uh, or not. I think it's it's not available, but in the model, in the description, I, if somebody sends me an email, I can uh, indicate the deliverable of the project that describes the configuration of the model and also where the input data can be found. Thank you very much, Philip. And uh, the last question for you, um, uh, regarding uh, the Barcelona test case, uh, Asking is uh, did you use the localized mortality data for the I think uh, for the health uh... for the health analysis? So I think uh, I have to apologize myself. So this case was worked out by John Ballester and 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 colleagues from ES Global. So uh, yeah, I have to check which type of mortality data was used, but it's very um, personalized mortality data that was done. Uh, so. Uh, specific care has been taken and okay it was then harmonized at, at the level of, of small neighborhoods uh, but which kind of mortality data it was uh, yeah we have to check but that can be given yeah okay thank you thank you thank you uh, Philip. and now uh, we have uh, some question for uh, I, I i think for uh, okay we have another one for uh, uh, for for Philip, um, uh, I'm curious to know where the health data from London and Barcelona come from. Uh, it, uh, the same question. Uh, it yeah, so presentation and it could you be done for other asking if it's possible to this is interesting for other European cities what is needed to run uh, other European cities and uh, if you can okay can can share the. Um, the link to download the, the, the data. Yeah, the mortality data is, of course, always uh, sensitive data. So for Barcelona, we work together with the Barcelona Health Agency, Public Health Agency. And for the London case, we work together with the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. So uh, you, yeah, you need local, uh, local partners that have access to the data to do those kind of analysis. 
Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, about um, uh, Carmela, uh, uh, Marco Santo asks, uh, if you, did you take into account uh, the different temperature of the building walls in Envimet? Mm, no, 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 no. Um, in this uh, study, we did not take into account the, um, these, uh, uh, this, para mm, this parameter because uh, uh, we work with a, mm, uh, with a free version of the software. So uh, this parameter is not possible to, it's not possible to control this, uh, uh, this variable. And uh, there is another similar uh, similar uh, question. Uh, if you considered uh, uh, the building material, uh, the effect is if you model it in your model, the building material like stone, uh, glass uh, or books. OK, uh, the material considered for a wall and roof is uh, concrete, is a, um, a basic uh, material because we want to uh, focus on uh, um, on the effect of uh, um, green areas. So uh, in the future, uh, we um, our aim is to change also uh, the uh, material of roof and wall in order to include uh, uh, tile uh, or other uh, brick, other material with uh, different uh, color and different uh, thermal properties. Thank you, Carmela. There are also for you many uh, com congratulations for, for the work. And um, Mariana uh, Guimares asks uh, if you have considered studying the cooling effect from water bodies, uh, and if not, why not? Okay, uh, we have not considered water bodies because uh, um, uh, this um, is a, a first uh, attempt to um, uh, evaluate microclimate. So we don't want to include many, too many variables. We want to um, analyze in this first study uh, only the contribution of green. Uh, after uh, we um, we have um, our aim is to um, include other uh, variables such as water bodies, cool roof, uh, trees, uh, and so on. But we want in, the, in this first uh, uh, step uh, to evaluate the contribution of adaptive solution uh, in, uh, uh, um, in a separate way. Okay, some, uh, there are two questions about uh, if uh, you have uh, published your, uh, your work and if it's possible to share uh, the detail. Yes, yes. Um, in the last slide, I shared the link to uh, download the paper. It's free uh, before uh, um, August and um, there is a, um, a QR code that uh, I... Now I can uh, share. Um, I can share the slide, or no? If you, um, I think that uh, with the, all this information will be available of, on the registration yeah. of this yeah, webinar yeah. available on CMCC uh, web uh, yeah. website. Uh, okay, uh, there are many questions about uh, if it's possible to have the email of Philippe and Carmela. And uh, the same, uh, you, can, uh, you can check on the CMCC uh, website or on our channel, uh, YouTube channel, and you will find all this uh, information. And um, arriving uh, many other, uh, uh, other uh, questions for you. Um, okay, okay, for Carmela, okay, mm, there is as if you if you try, try to describe uh, what is uh, uh, FAR, uh, what is the FAR uh, abbreviation? Okay, only the FAR, only the FAR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, the FAR is a, uh, an urban descriptor um, used in uh, urban uh, planning to um, evaluate the uh, building density uh, is calculated as uh, the ratio between the total floor area of building and the plot area. So is uh, a simple ratio between these two uh, factors. 
and um, it is possible to uh, classify buildings uh, in according to low, medium, high, and very high uh, far. And this parameter is also uh, adopted uh, by um, Hoke and Stewart in the development of local climate zone. So uh, with this parameter, it's possible to, uh, this, um, to, uh, to define the uh, low rise, high rise, and very high rise building and distinguish between a tower, uh, linear block uh, and uh, isolated building, for example. There is another question very interesting for you, Carmela. If you can, do you plan to implement this framework in a decision support system? Yeah, uh, the um, the final uh, the the final aim is to uh, is to implement this uh, uh, this work in a uh, decision support system uh, because. Uh, um, it require obviously uh, other um, other studies to introduce uh, other parameter and uh, uh, the possibility to um, to change uh, the values uh, in order to um, allow um, uh, local authorities, practitioner, uh, professional uh, to um, to define uh, many uh, post potential configuration of uh, um, urban layout and of adaptive uh, solution. So uh, it is a, a very uh, interesting work, is an ongoing, uh, ongoing work. Hey, Philip, there are uh, many people asking for collaboration to run your uh, urban clip model in other European cities, like for example, Novi Sad uh, and uh, from um, Ukraine and other. Uh, and um, okay, but I, I, I think that uh, we can uh, uh, stop uh, now uh, the, this, this uh, session. Um, I want to really thank you all the participants uh, to this webinar today. I want to thank Philippe and Carmela for their very interesting uh, speech. And uh, I also remark that uh, the registration of this webinar will be available on uh, CMCC uh, website. And uh, if you need to have more information on the speakers and, and so on, you can uh, write an email uh, to the um, organization of this uh, webinar. Uh, many thanks and uh, have a good uh, end of July. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Thank bye you bye. for the organization. Thank bye. You. Thank you all. Thank you.